All right, so welcome to the first in a series of video with regards to the human eye. And we're, we just have biophysics in mind, so we're not really going to dive deep into the anatomy or the physiology of it. We're just going to mention the bare essentials to understanding what we need to. We're going to discuss myopia and myperopia. And this is directly from the lab work that we've done. And we're going to start discussing photoreceptors. Just, just scratch the surface, and then the next video is going to pick up from the same spot. So, by all means, let's get started. This depiction is brought to us by Wikipedia. And as you may have noticed, I took out all the, really, all the, other, on the other notations here because we don't really need it. I'm just going to mention what we need. And what we need is to understand that the eye, first and foremost, features a lens. A lens that has a numerical aperture and has a curvature to it. And we have muscle around around the lens on each side that can actually change its curvature and, and actually get us to focus on different things at different distances. The cornea is just this transparent tissue that protects the, uh, the pupil and the iris. And then we have the retina. And what's important to know about the retina, the retina here, the retina is a photosensitive tissue. It has the photoreceptors, which are the cells that we're going to meet a little bit later that can take light and interpret it and can take light and and turn it into some sort of action potential. And what, what we can see right away is that this, this spot right here does not have this photosensitive uh, tissue containing photoreceptors because it has the uh, optical nerve going through. We have to have a nerve in the eye, otherwise there's no point in having an eye. And it would have to, it would have to come at this point. And because it does, because it, we can say it spills into the eye, it spills into the eye at this point, we're not going to have the photoreceptors. And because we don't have the photoreceptors at this point, this is why we have the blind point. So I was just say blind, blind spot. Not blind, blind spot. And we have that blind spot because we have the nerve coming in. And it just so happens that just like any other lens that has an optical axis running through it, and that optical axis is going to be where the uh, where the light converges into a single point. We have that in our eye as well, and it's right here. This is where it is. And this point is called the fovea centralis. This fovea right here, there's a little kink in. It goes a little bit down, and we'll, we'll get to know this a little bit later. So this is the basics, the very basics that we need to bear in mind. We're just going to keep on going and talk a little bit about myopia and hyperopia. And they do like to ask about it because it pertains to the lab work. And what we really need to understand is that we want, the, uh, we want the light rays to focus and form right on the retina here at the fovea centralis at this point. And there could be a situation, doesn't matter for what reason, I'm not going to get to that, that the light rays may actually want to focus on a farther, on a farther point. And that could create a blur. And that actually would. And this is, this is actually called, this is actually called, Hyper, hyperopia, hyperopia or farsightedness, farsightedness, farsightedness. Very good. And I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna add here for hyperopia, the focal point is, let's say, behind, behind or after, after the retina, behind or after the retina. By behind, I mean it's here, it's behind the retina, it's after the retina. And we can also have a, a situation in which light rays would want to convene at a short or at a closer focal point or before, before the retina. And this would be myopia. Myopia or short, short sightedness. Short sightedness. Very good. And I'm just going to add here before. And what I mean before, I just this really mean this point, right, before the retina. And really we want it here on the fovea centralis up against the retina. So how do we fix this? How do we fix this? So let's take, let's take a situation in which, uh, in which we have this lens. Actually, yes, we have this lens. I'm going to take the other situation as well. We're going to do both. What happens at this point is that I want it to focus here. This is, this is where I want the light to focus. But it just so happens, it just so happens that the light is entering the lens and is focused further away, is focused further away at this point. 
So what am I really going to do? I need these rays to focus a little bit closer. So I need to converge them. So I can use a converging lens. I can use a converging lens. Actually, I'm going to use a different color to show the different path. I'm going to use a converging lens. And this lens is going to cause the light to go in a little at closer points, at closer points here. And then it's going to move in in closer and a closer angle. And it's basically going to converge the light even before it enters the eye. And let's just say I have another situation in which the, uh, the light rays coming in are actually focused way before, way before the retina. And I really need them here. I really need them here. So what am I going to do? I can actually, if I could take this, this angle and push it further apart and this one further apart as well, well, I can actually do this with a diverging lens. I can actually do this with a diverging lens. I'm going to write the names of the lenses, so don't worry about that just yet. Let's just try and understand. All right, what am I doing here? I'm just taking this slight ray. I'm just going to bend it over slightly to the side, bend it over slightly to the side here, and it's going to end up meeting at a further point. Let's just assume that I drew it correctly, and it's meeting at the same point. Very good. And we can fix hyperopia, hyperopia when it's behind or after by, by making the light rays convene at a closer point, and this is converging, converging lens, aka convex, convex lens. And we can get myopia to sort out by uh, diverging lens, diverging lens or concave lens, concave lens. And basically, if you're asked through some uh, feat of destiny to explain this in an open essay question, all you can really say is hyperopia Focal, focal point is behind or after the retina. We can use a converging lens to convert the incident light a little bit before, a little bit before. On the flip side, you can say myopia is where the focal point is before the retina. Or we can use a diverging lens to get, get the angle a little bit wider and get them to meet a little bit later on the retina. Perfect. Very good. And you can, you can actually prepare yourself for different types of questions where you need to explain what myopia and hyperopia mean with respect to the retina, the whole before and after thing. So you need to know that. We're going to just touch on the idea of photoreceptors. And this is brought to us by the Institute of Structural Biology and Biophysics in Unich in Germany. And they have an awesome website with very interesting stuff about it. So maybe you'll get and uh, you're getting it and look at it one day. But basically what we need to know is we've, we've, briefly, uh, we've briefly gone through the fact that the, uh, the retina is some sort of photosensitive um, tissue that has photoreceptors. And as you can imagine, these photoreceptors would give us, they would take light and they would turn light into action potential. That's really what they're doing. And we have cones, we have cones, and we have rods just as indicated here. And what we really need to know, I'm not going to get into it at this point, but in the next video we're going to go through the entire relationship and the differences between the rods and the cones. And all these different relationships, you can expect them in the test because they're the easiest to ask about as far as how many rods do I have, how many cones do I have, what do cones do, what do rods do, um, at what sensitivity would I expect higher performance, and where can I find most of them in my eye. Things such as that. So I'll see you in the next video.